So insects, geez, I wish I could come here and give you like super bright solutions. We have a lot of insect problems on the farm. If there's one area where every year we are like, oh my God, what's happening? It's, every year, every two years, there seems to be new bugs coming out. So there's a couple of things that we do. The first of all is that we have a plan that gives us solutions ahead of time. So we're prepared, okay? For most insect problems, we use nets, insect nets. We also use biopesticides for certain crops. And these biopesticides, they're natural, they're, you know, they're biodegradable, photodegradable, but they're toxic, okay? So you, we, we dress up for the occasion and we use them when we know what we're doing with them. And we know how and when to use them because we're scouting for the problems. We're not just going out and spraying whatever. We scout for certain insects that might be there. And then we're evaluating the population pressure and, and we're making a decision based on that. Is there enough pressure to go and use the pests? Just like regular conventional farmers would do. And so scouting is a big part of our job comes summertime. Every morning I make around around the garden and I go out and, and observe and look for something. And what's great where I live is that we have a service of professional scouters that are sending us emails telling us cucumber beetle has arrived in the eastern townships. Be alerted. And then when I go out in the morning I scout for the cucumber beetle because I, 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 it might be there. And that service is really cool. It's free and you know this is where state, state extension agents they can really be useful. Okay? Sticky tapes are another way to see if the bugs are there. All of the procedures that you can find all of this online or an experiment or veteran grower or a, you know, a, a state extension agent can really help you out with these things. These are the insect nets. Just, you can't grow organically without them. It's not possible. You need to have them. They're a mechanical control. They're effective. And, uh, geez, they work. You see? Flea beetles. You can't, you, this won't grow optimal plants. And you need to forget the idea that since it's organic, it's okay that it's not. No, that doesn't fly anymore. If you want to be at market and, and be, you know, the, 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 the grower that people look up to and they go and they buy from you, your stuff needs to be prime. And so you look after it and you use these nets. These are like bigger hole, bigger mesh, more resistant nets for cucumber beetles and you have finer meshes for sweet midge or other problems. And these guys cost 10 times these times and they're 10 times more fragile. So you get the net for the bug that you're protecting yourself against. And you call these guys and you're like, well, I have the sweet midge problem. What's the net I need? And they'll, they'll recommend the proper net. Yes? You're spanning hoops with the netting too. You're not doing it like one row per net or whatever. No, because when you're burying edges, there's four corners. And I, I'd like to have bigger nets because I'm going to spend less time burying these edges. So I'm always thinking about that. Yep. Are you opening them to cultivate and then put, putting them back on? And if so, are you experiencing problems with just that amount of time if they're off? You know, it depends. Usually it depends what the pressure is for the bug. Uh, you know, at worst case scenario, that happened to us a couple of times, you're going to open, cultivate, and then apply a pesticide, and then close it. A biopesticide, okay, certified. Or we have that same problems with row covers, with cucumber beetles. You know, we use row cover in the spring because our, zoo, our you know, summer squash plants are fragile. And, but it, get, it gets to be really hot some days underneath these row covers. If we open them, then we're screwed because the cucumber beetle gets in. And then when you close it, you're kind of creating a, you know, a mess. So sometimes we put insect nets and row covers so that we can open them to ventilate. 
So. Did you do anything with farmscaping? Farmscaping. I didn't say anything about that. I'm glad you're asking. We've put a lot of ecological niches around the garden. And we're still learning about this. Which plant, where, flowers, this and that. But time being, I have the sense that that will help, but it's not enough. So you need to be prepared to, to go that route too. Losing crop to insect pests, and it's straight money out of your pocket. Yes? Um, I, I just had a clarification and then a question. On the, you use a uh, row cover, which is uh, for heat, and then you have separate nets to keep out different insects. That don't have heat retaining, yeah. And do you find that it's worthwhile to reuse the row cover or the netting each year? Oh yeah, we'll, we'll use them as long as they're not scrapped. And uh, so we're trying to be careful with them. So do you, how do you store them? So like the we, we have these bags, these uh, totes. We put them in totes. We just stuff them. And then we close the bags and then we pile them so that the mice don't don't get in. Yes. For pollination, what happens for certain crops like summer squash, okay, they're, they're covered with a net, but then if you want to have the bees come in, you need to open the net. Usually that happens when the plant is already well established and the cucumber beetles are not a problem. The, my, our problem with cucumber beetles is that they transmit bacterial wilt <coughs> that, you know, eventually can, you lose everything to that. And so, you know, one bug can transmit that problem to everyone, to all the plants. So uh, in the morning, really early, before the bees come out, <coughs> I go with a hand torch and I burn them inside the flowers. Because all the cucumber beetles are hidden in the flowers. And then I go and I burn them there. Male flowers. And that really diminishes the population. Same here, we're growing tomatoes inside our hoop houses. One cucumber beetle can transmit the disease to all of my plants. So am I spraying every week? No. I'm sealing my hoop house with an insect net. And that solves the problem. What I'm t while I'm talking about sealing, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but there's no way, there's no hole. Everything is tight. And that is really important because these boogers, you know, they just kind of walk everything and then they scent and when they, they're looking for a way in. So we do this, we even have like a sass to, we get in, we close the door, we investigate, no cucumber beetles, we're good, and then we open the other door, and then we do our stuff. When we're harvesting, we take everything out, we leave it there, we close the door, and then we can open the other door and things come out. So again, it's the same thing as, as weed prevention, it's bug prevention, nets. Nets is the way to go. And so this comes to the idea, if, if you're doing nets and these, you need to make sure that your structure is built in a way where you don't have like these 12 feet doors that are not tight at all, that, are, that were designed for tractors. There's no need to go with tractors inside hoop houses. You should have small doors that, that close, like, you know, service doors. And you go with, with hand tools and you make sure that everything is tight. Okay, so that's my perspective.